Shalom, Jerusalem. Thank you for joining us and welcome to Beta Bichai. Professor Shimon Yakelson is a renowned researcher who specializes in medieval Hebrew manuscripts and in Kunabula. Professor Yakelson is here with us from his permanent residence in St. Petersburg, Russia. This is a four part series about the first printed books in Hebrew. Our session today will discuss a Hebrew book in Europe at the dawn of printing. Thank you very much. Uh, Tamar, thank you for your nice introduction. A previous session we did about Hebrew manuscripts we did when I was in Russia, in my house. And now, thanks God, we are in Jerusalem. And so, welcome and uh, Shalom Mir Shalom, Shalom from Jerusalem. In this short course of four lectures, I am going to give you a general characteristic of Hebrew book in Europe in the dawn of printing. I will show you Hebrew in Kunabala in the context of Hebrew codicology and paleography. I will touch the beginning of Hebrew in Kunabala research. I will tell you the story of Hebrew presses. We will analyze the repertoire of Hebrew in Kunabala as a mirror of the reader's taste. And if there is enough time, we will touch briefly the history of Hebrew printed books of the first half of the 16th century, when the leadership in this field of Hebrew print came into the Christian hands. However, first of all, I would like to read you a short poem in Hebrew. This poem was written by Jewish printer Meshulam Kuzi in the year 1475. It was written on behalf of the book itself, and it is like a hymn for the new art of print. Uh, I'll read you the poem in Hebrew, and you can read by yourself in the English translation. Ani chokhma, lechol chokhma ateret. Ani nistar, lechol sod mizgeret. Beli kulumus, verishumi nikeret. Be ein sofer, hubarti bemachberet. Bevat achat de yo alai overet. Beli sirtut ketiva meyusheret. Tamech ale devora ha geveret. Beshevet soferim hi meshoreret. Lu oti raata bemachteret. Ale roshi husamti la koteret. So, now let's start. The Latin word in Kunabala, which means cradle, or figuratively infancy, defines books printed by Gutenberg method before the 1st of January 1505. It first appeared as a bibliographical term in the middle of the 17th century in the work of German bibliophile Bernard von Malinkrodt. During the 18th century, the term gradually settled in the general bibliography. So, this period begins with the first attempts of Johann Gutenberg, inventor of the new craft or the new art of printing, with movable letters. It was approximately the end of the 1430s. And the period ends, as I, as I mentioned above, on January 1st, 1501. So we are talking about, about the period of, 16, of 60 years. As far as the Hebrew book is in question, this cradle period is much shorter. It lasts from the end of 60s till year 1487 or 1488. During this extremely short period, Hebrew book printing existed in Italy, Spain, Portugal, and 
Turkey. For relatively longer or shorter periods, Hebrew printed houses operated at least in 18 different places. 11 places in Italy, Rome, Piove di Sacco, Reggio di Calabria, Mantua, Ferrara, Bologna, Soncino, Casal Maggiore, Napoli, Brescia, and Barco. Three places in Spain, Guadalajara, Hijar, and Zamora. Three places in Portugal, Faro, Lisbon, and Leiria. And one place in Turkey, Constantinople. But of course, when we take into consideration the anonymously printed books, or those without place name, the total number of printing houses was more numerous. Hebrew in Kunabula are represented by a rather small group of about 140, 150 editions. That accounts for less than half a percent of all books printed during the Incunabula period. Books were printed with approximately 200 to 400 copies per edition. However, the significance of Hebrew in Kunabula is hardly to overestimate for both the development of European book printing and the history of Jewish culture in Europe during the Renaissance period. Speaking of Hebrew in Kunabula in the context of European printing, the following important points should be noted. Hebrew in Kunabula were the first to be printed not in Latin characters. It is with the printing of Hebrew books that book printing in general started in Portugal and Turkey. The printing houses of Piova di Sacca, Reggio di Calabria, Sancina, Casal Maggiore, Barco, Guadalajara, Hijar, Zamora, Leiria, and Constantinople were the only hotbeds of printing in the 15th century. In the year, 40, uh, approximately in the year 1470, Estelina Conet, the wife of a printer Abraham Conet from Mantua, printed an ethical didactic treatise, Bechinat Olam, a study of the world, by, written by Yedaya Hapnini. Thus, having become the first woman whose name is mentioned in the history of book printing. It has been generally believed that the first woman typographer was Anna Rugerin, the widow of the printer Thomas Rugerin. Her name appears in the colophons of two books published in Augsburg in 1484. Despite the edition by Estelina Coden, being undated, we can state without hesitations that it had been printed early. By the way, my friends, now I have shared it with you that it's my personal contribution to the history of book printing. No one put attention of her name before, of the name of Estelina Conat. Speaking about Hebrew in Kunabula in the context of Jewish culture, we have to note the following. By the time printing was invented, almost all the major classical works of Judaism had already been written. I mean, not only the basis ones like Bible, the Mishnah, and the Babylonical and Jerusalem Talmuds. 
but also the main halachic works, except to lie for the Shulchan Aruch, which is that because it was written in 16th century, but it was based on already written work of Turim by Yaakov ben Asher. The main commentaries of the Bible and the Talmud and the main works of Jewish ethics and philosophy also were already written. The analysis of the repertoire of Jewish printing houses is extremely important for understanding the taste of the reading public and the real needs of the people. From this point of view, the cardinal difference between a manuscript book and a printed book is that an Enlightenment Jew could copy any book for himself, but the printer could afford publishing only demanded books. He invested a lot of money in what is in demand. During this period, not only the most important Jewish books were printed, but almost the final revisions of this text were made. The typographers prepared text for printing from several manuscripts, three, four, five manuscripts at least. They, they selected variants, compared them with each other, and as a result, formed the final version of a particular text, which was then reprinted for centuries. On the example, on the example of the Jewish first printed books, the cooperation of Jews and Christian masters is clearly visible. They used the same decorative elements, frames, opening letters, and so on, borrowing them from each other. Christian craftsmen were engaged in making of Hebrew letters for print. All this is evidence of the involvement of Jews in the general processes of European development. An extremely important contribution of the Jewish first printers to our culture is the development of the form of letters of Hebrew alphabet. I mean the square letters, which we use till today. Now, let me give you some remarks about the beginning of bibliographical interest to 15th century Hebrew editions. The founder of Hebrew incunable research is the Italian biblical scholar and bibliophile Giovanni Bernardo de Rossi, 1744-1831. Giovanni de Rossi spent half a century teaching biblical studies at the University of Parma. And also, he collected Hebrew books all his life. De Rossi managed to compile the largest collection of Hebraica collected by a Christian Hebraist scholar. The collection includes one 1,432 manuscripts, in which almost, almost half biblical manuscripts, and 1,500 printed books, among them 92 in Cunabula and 300 editions of the 16th century. Today, the collection is kept in the Biblioteca Palatina in Parma. De Rossi was the first 
who classified Hebrew editions of the 15th century as a separate group and developed the basis principles of their description. His main work, which laid the foundation of modern research of Hebrew in Kunabula, was the fundamental monograph in Latin language named Annales Hebraeo Typographici Seculi Quinti Decim, Hebrew Printing Annals of the 15th century. It gives a brief historical sketch of the formation of Hebrew printing and provides a detailed description of 86 editions. The most important element of the description of books in analysis, from my point of view, is the citation of the text of the incunabula colophons. Colophon is it's a Greek word, and it means the text that written at the end of the book by printer himself. Usually, it contains bibliographical data, data also. And De Rossi not only published these colophons, and he published the translation of this text into Latin language. And it gave the possibility of using this bibliographical information to book historians who do not read Hebrew. This publication opened the Hebrew page in the European context of the study of Incunabula. Starting with De Rossi's works and up to the present day, the description of Hebrew Incunabula takes place in several directions. Within the framework of consolidated original description of Incunabula in general, with framework of description of separate, separate collections of Incunabula. For example, I published the catalog of the Incunabula collection of the Institute of Oriental Studies, and I published the catalog of Incunabula collections of the Jewish Theological Seminary of America in New York. Also, within the framework of textual research of bibliographical description of speci uh, specific Hebrew books, like uh, very famous introduction to Hebrew Bible with description of the first printed editions of Bible by Christopher Ginsberg. Uh, and the catalog of Hebrew in Kunabula collections in general, uh, or regional collections, for example, I'm going okay, to my special uh, work, so it was a catalog of the whole Hebrew in Kunabula in the libraries of Soviet Union back in, that was published back in, in 1988. So a lot of opportunities for research and for describing Hebrew in Kunabula. Now I would like to start speaking about the history of the origin of Hebrew printing. The first references of Hebrew letters in relation of printing activities appears as early in the Avignon documents of 1444-1446. These documents were discovered in 1890 in the archive of Avignon. Among other things noted there, it is a contract from the year 1446 signed between the goldsmith named Prokof Waldvogel of Prague and a Jew named Davinus from Coderas, a dyer by profession. According to this contract, the smith committed himself to preparing metal Hebrew types and some wood facilities and to teach the Jew how 
uh, how to write the art of artificial writing. Further on in uh, further on this document, it's written that the dyer received what he requested, but there is no testimony as to any use of these types. In the same way that in general there are no trace of work by Walt Vogel, who went bankrupt that year, fled the city and ultimately disappeared from the purview of the research of printing. But the idea, so we have no any evidence that any book was published with these letters and it's in so early period as 1446. But the idea that it was possible that Hebrew book was printed in this period is very, how to say, very touch Jewish mind. And from time to time, we hear about the, uh, we hear about books that we can probably think that it, it was done in, by Prokop Waldfogel. Uh, for example, some years ago, it was like a very important, uh, very important news in Jerusalem that one book dealer bring some photos, about two photos of PU team liturgic poems or for Slichot. And it was the idea that it was published by at that time. So it's, it was published in Avignon. And it's absolutely fake. I saw these photos. But it's fake and it's not true. But it's very interesting that from time to time we can hear about this story. But the actual history of Hebrew printing, of course, does not begin with the mention of Hebrew letters in the Avenue documents. Even, uh, but it, of course, connected with the history of Jewish community and Jewish life in Italy. The very fact that Hebrew printing emerges precisely in Italy seems natural in light of Italian society in the middle of the 15th century in general and the Jewish community in particular. Even without going deeply into the history of the Jewish community in Italy towards the end of the Renaissance, it can be emphasized that Jewish community in Italy was the most prospectious the wealthiest and the most ex extensively in doubt with civic rights among the Jewish communities in Europe in that period. In 1463-1464, two craftsmen from Mainz, Germany, named Arnold Pannartz and Konrad Svenheim arrived at the Benedict Monastery in the town of Subiaco. It's not far from Rome. And they established the first Italian printing house and printed four books. In 1467, sorry, they moved to the Eternal City itself and worked as partners until 1473, printing another 48 books. And approximately in this period, we think that the he first printing house of Hebrew books started to work in Roma. Actually, Roma is mentioned as the place of printing only in one Hebrew book. 
This book is a commentary of the Pentateuch by Moshe ben Nachman Gerundi. It's a very rare and really important book. Here on the last, last line, you can see the colophon. Ne'etak al yedei ovadia u'menashe u'vinyamin me'roma. So it means copied by Ovadi and Benashe and Benjamin of Roma. Besides this book, three other books were printed with the same stock of identical, identical text types, characterizes in particularly by unusual form of the letter Tet. I want to zoom out this leaf and to show you this uh, letter Tet. It's because you can see that the inner stroke is rounded in this book. So this, and they use the same stock of paper. It's the paper, it means the paper with the same watermark. So the we are talking about four books. Commentary of Ramban to the Pentateuch, Sefer He'aruch by Nathan ben Yechiel, Commentary on Daniel by Gershonit, and Commentary on the Pentateuch by Rashi. In Roma, the response of Rajba, Rabbi Shlomo ibn Adret, were apparently printed in types that are very, very similar, also, but not identical, to the characters of the four books mentioned above, and mostly on the same sort of paper. It's interesting that the evidence for this printing in Rome comes to us from a secondary sources. In, the small, in small book, Treatise on the Bill of Divorce, that was published in Venice in 1566, in a halachic discussion on the problem over the decision to either marry or not marry, support is adducted as Rabbi Shlomo ibn Adret of blessed memory had settled as it is written in his responsa that were printed in Rome number 396. Around the year 1566, the responsa of Shlomo ibn Adret were printed several times, and always with the indication of the place of printing and with different numbering of the paragraphs. So this paragraph of 396 with this text that was citated, we can found only in the edition that we are talking about, Rajba, that with no place and with no date, but now because of this evidence we can say for sure that it was printed in Roma. To this book of Shelot Utshuvot or Responsa of Rajba, we can add one more book that was printed in the same letters. Sefer HaShorashim by David Kimhi. So we can have now six books that were printed as we think today in Rome in the same paper and uh, approximately with the same letters. I would like to show you. This is a very interesting copy of uh, Responsa of Ibn Adret from the collection of the Institute of Oriental Manuscripts, Russian Academy of Science, and it's very important 
that you can see here, we, we enlarge, I want to enlarge to zoom it for you, is the uh, sign of Chaim David Azulai, very famous bibliographer, and the stamp of the uh, Biblioteca Friedlandiana, it's a very important library from the 19th century, just to show you a uh, history of, the, of this copy. So we have six books on, of Roma, and all these six books has the same watermark named bow and arrow within a circle. And this watermark is well known for using in Rome in, in uh, Latin print, for Christian printing houses at the time of 1468-69 till 1471. Just a sec. So I would like to show you this is a watermark, this watermark, and it's taken from the copy of the first book, Commentary of Ramban for the Pentateuch, and I did it from the list without text, so it's, you can see the clear, the, the figure. Two more editions we can add to this group as a half group, let's say, because it, they printed in the same paper of this uh, watermark and with partly with letters that we can think that it is the same letters, big letters, not the small one. The Sefer Mitzvot Gadol by Moses Ben Yaakov of Kuzi and Sefer More Nebuchim, first edition of Hebrew philosophy. Just a sec. Here, the More Nebuchim, that, uh, from the, the same collection of the Institute of Oriental Manuscripts. And uh, we think that it was printed in Rome in about 1470, but its edition, as I said, Sine Loca and Sine Anno, without place and without date. You can see also a lot of handwritten notes uh, on this copy. Now let's switch to real dated Hebrew books. The first dated book in the history of bookmaking was published in Regio de Calabria by the printer Abraham ben Isaac ben Garton. And this book is the commentary of the Torah by Rashi. According to the Calafon, it print, its printing was completed on Adar 2nd, 4235 from the creation. It means 17th of February, 14. 75. So this is a colophon, it's written like a poem. The city of Rija de Calabria lies in the ext extreme south of the Apennine Peninsula, in the region that was at that time under the cultural and political influence of the Kingdom of Spain. The book was printed by a craftsman of Spanish providence according to his name and in typical Sephardi semi-cursive type. It's uh, all time I want to, to underline and sorry I, did, I didn't do it uh, with Roma editions. So Roma editions were printed with letters from the Italian type with some Ashkenazi influence. But this is, you can see easily, that it's, it's printed in letters from Sephard, typical, typical Sephardic uh, shape.
Uh, interesting to say that the book was printed on the same kind of paper that uh, Roma editions, with the watermark bow and arrow within a circle, uh, but uh, a little bit in another size. In, the, in this colophon, the printer says that in place where he studied, he copied a book from uh, its line five in, in, in this text. Bemkom lemidati sfarim katavati. And uh, from this sentence, you cannot understand what does it mean. He was a copyist or scriber for for manuscripts, or it's not the first book that he printed. But it's, uh, it's really impossible to understand perfectly. But what can we say? We, we think today that he printed his books for sure for Sephardic people in, for Spain and Portugal. And probably it's the answer for the question why Till today, we know only one copy of this book and only, if I'm not wrong, two fragments in it. Two of them in uh, New York, by the way. A second dated printed book was printed by the family of Rabbi Meshulam Kusi in a small town of Piova di Saka in the Padua region. The work is by Yaakov ben Asher Arba'aturim, so it's four big volumes. It was published in four volumes, and it's printing, or more accurately, that one of these volumes was completed on the Tammuz 28, 5,235. It means by July 3, 1475. This book contains three colophons at the end of the tour Orachaim, Evan Haezer, and Hoshen Hamishpat. Here we are. And in these colophons, we can study the story of the printing of this book. By the way, the first citation, we started with the citation of the one of these colophons, Ani Chochma. Yes. What can we understand? We learned, for example, that Rabbi Meshulam Kuzi died during the walk, and that then his sons, stepped into the branch, and they carried on the reminder of this work. It's written in first colophon. It is important to note that the death of Rabbi Meshulam Kusi is lamented twice by the printers, in the first as well in the second colophon. And both time, it is emphasized that the initiator of the printer has gone to the land of the living, as a language of colophon, of course, during the walk. But in the colophon of the Hoshen HaMishpat, the third volume, the name of Meshulam Kuzi noted with the blessing for his life. Okay? Bless be him from now to eternity. So we can understand that it was another order of printing these four uh, volumes. And also we understand that during this work, his children were in trouble and were in jail for, for a while, for example, and that his wife or his widow took part in the printing. And as you remember, the first poem that I started with, in, it was the Dvora, the prophets. Some of scholars 
had an idea that Dvora also was a name of his wife, but not only the Dvora from the uh, Bible. If we can accept this idea, so we can say that also Dvora was probably the first woman mentioned in the history of printing. For two of them, Estelina and Dvora, I myself don't believe that it is true. I think it's only just a image of Bible heroica, heroical, you know, idea, but who knows. Uh, in the same year, 1475, it was also one very interesting uh, situation with the Christian print. It doesn't connect it directly for, for our topic, but I want to stress it and I want to show it that in this year, for first time, Hebrew types were used in non-Hebrew printed book. And it was in Essling in Germany. And it was done by printer Konrad Feiner. There are, however, not printed letters. It's important for our, for our topic. It's not printed letters, and it's woodcuts letters. But still, it's, it's Hebrew. You see, it's Folio 10 of this book, Breshit Bara, and the name of the god, Tetragrammaton. And in Folio 45, you can see the, in the whole Hebrew alphabet. As you can see, it was cut from wood, but you see that it is exactly very, very Ashkenazic type of letters. And every letter, of course, cut separately, because you can see no one letter came twice in the same shape. So, Thus, the dated history of Hebrew printing begins in 1475. But probably at that time, and probably a little bit early, the printing house of Abraham ben Shlomo Konat was established in Mantua, the capital of Lombardy. Eight editions can be attributed to this press but only one bears a specific date. The Tur Ora Chaim of Arba Turim by Yaakov Bedashir, printed with the whole date, and it is 6th of June, 1476. And one book, Yosephon, uh, cited the, days, the date on the counting of uh, the days of Omer. And we can understand, it's not the whole date, but we can understand that it was written not in the, printed not in the year 1474 and not in the year 1477 because it was Shabbos. And uh, we are thinking that it was printed before the year 1478 or in the year 78. Regarding the another book, very important and interesting book, Nofet Tsufim, the Honeycomb, by Judah Messir Leon, and it was printed at the lifetime of uh, this rabbi. Indirect proof determines the estimated limits for its printing. A manuscript of the work in the Ambrosiana Library in Florence was copied by Menachem ben Elia de Rossi in Ferrari on Rosh Chodesh Mar Cheshvan, 5235. It means 12th of October, 1474. Just a sec. This is, a, this, is this edition, also from the collection of the Institute of Oriental Studies. This copy was made either from our copy, printed copy, was made either from this manuscript or probably the manuscript was copied from already printed book. 
but anyhow we can talk about the same period. Around October 1474, maybe a little bit later. Uh, by the way, if we are speaking about book history in general, it's very interesting to show you in this particular page two things. In the up, up, you can see, I, I'll enlarge it, the sign of Hamaskil, Missifre Hamaskil Mendel Landesberg, from the books of the uh, men of Haskalah, of Enlightenment Movement, Mendel Landesberg, and he was a very famous uh, figure in Russian Jewish history. He was a book collector and uh, very, you know, cle clever and educated man from Kriminchuk, if I'm not wrong, at the end, second part, let's say, of, let's say, of 19th century. And nearby you can see the stamp. This is a stamp of Russian censure from the year 18. 37. So in the eight, year 1837, the censor, Jewish censor, and his name, Mem Moshe Mordechai Averbuch, gave the permission of using the book from the 15th century in the territory of Russian Empire. Just interesting to, to see it. So, uh, Avram Konet published also the Nofet Sufim and the Sefer of Eldad Hadani and Luchot and Sefer Yore Dea. A few more facts about Avram ben, ben Shlomo Konet and his printing house should be added here. The printer was apparently of provenance origin from the town Conant on the French-Spanish border. He excelled in other professions as well as physician and copyist of books. The, uh, of books. the manuscript of at least one of these books, which be copied by him, was survived to our days. Conant was apparently a defined Renaissance man. He printed books that suited the taste of the Enlightenment, a philosophical commentary of the Pentateuch by Gershonit, books of science and history, like Luchot, attributed to his contemporary Mordechai Finzi, or Yosifon, the historical book, and very important uh, book of Sefer Nofet Sufim, that you can see, because it's the only one example of the rhetorica written in Hebrew language and based on the examples of Hebrew rhetorica of Nevi'im, of prophets, and not rhetorica of Greeks and Latin you know, authors. And as I said already sometimes that his wife printed Bechinat Olam, and uh, of course it's very, very important. The establishment of Hebrew printing in Ferrari, in Ferrara, is connected with the activity of the printer Avraham ben Chaim de Tintori of Pesara. And uh, he printed Yore Dea, and also he printed the commentary of Job by Gershonit. And this printing was finished on May 16, 1477. Talking about Bologna, we can say that we know only one dated book that was print and it's uh, Pentateuch with Targum and Commentary of Russia, and it was printed in the year 1484. But it's import important to say that we know one book with no, with no play indication of place, but that was printed in 
the same letters. So probably we think that it was done also in Bologna and it's book of Psalms with uh, the commentary of David Kimhi that was printed by Yosef Neria Chaim Mordechai and Heskia in the year 1477. Uh, I, uh, this is a sorry. This is a part of the of Yosifon of Mantua, and this is a leaf from the. It's a very rare copy of this edition from 1477, and it's very interesting that it was the first time that they tried to print with nekudot with vowels. You can see it on this page. But it was so difficult that they did it only in the some few first pages. And after that, they switched to just biblical text with no vocalization. And as you can see in this leaf, we are so <laughs> going back and back to the history of the Jewish book law. You can see arrangements of a lot of lines in the commentary of David Kimhi. And it's very difficult for the Catholic censorship of the 16th and 17th, let's say, 17th century. Of course, today we can read the text, but at the beginning in 17th century, I think it was really Im impossible. Today, the ink is not, it's, it's visible, and we know the text of the commentary. But in general, if you see mostly the commentary of David Kimchi, you can see a lot of lines like this. So with the, just a sec, no. With this book, I would like to finish the first half of the history of Jewish presses of the first half of, of the short period of 30 years. And on the next session, we will talk about uh, presses of 80s and 90s. Thank you very much for your attention and a good day. Shalom from Jerusalem.